Welcome back to the channel, YouTube. Juke Hop Adventures. Um, still working on my 1992 Chevy Astro. Uh, said I was going to get a fuel filter to replace it. So um, I have painted the bracket. This was kind of rusty, but it's still good and strong, so we can reuse it. Uh, that holds the fuel filter on. And also, I went and picked up the replacement piece that's going to go in the frame of the van. So, uh, as you can see, my gauge fits on there real nicely. And, of course, this is the way it's going to sit inside the van. These flanges um, support the floor. So, what I plan on doing to install this is I'm going to hopefully fit this over the existing beam. Now I know it's the same size. Part of it I'm going to have to cut out anyway because it's uh, got rust in it. So I'll, I, what I'm thinking about doing is splitting it right along the bottom, the part that's on the van I mean, split it right along the bottom and that will give me enough room that I can squeeze it together and it'll go inside here. I'm hoping that I can just slide it up on there and it would squish it together and but I'm this is pretty thick metal so probably what I'm going to end up doing is cutting part of this off I'm, I think I'm going to use about this much uh, on the part that I've shown you I, I got it extra long in case I needed other metal or I needed to do something on the other frame rail the other frame rail looks fine to me, so I'll make a decision on how long the piece is, and I'll probably just have to completely cut that out. I may actually have to cut it right along here and, uh, and just spot weld it or nuts and bolts bolt it onto the existing frame rail, which the frame rail this high up is in good condition. At least I think it is. Anyway, so this part, it's going to take a while. I'm not going to get to this real soon. So my plan for today is putting on the fuel filter and taking off the hoses that run from the body to the fuel tank. They're still on the underside. So I'm going to take those off. I'm going to go to the store and get replacements for them. It's a pain in the butt to get that tank out. So I don't want to put it back with old hoses. Uh, I'm also going to take the front seats and the carpet out of the, of the front of the van because there's moisture in the pad, the felt pad that's under that carpet. So I need to get that out so it can dry out and I can assess the damage to the floor hopefully it's not that bad uh, and maybe repair what is damaged there so that's my plan for today and uh, so I'll turn you off while I do this menial maintenance stuff and I'll bring you back when I'm getting ready to take the seats out of the uh, interior So I got the fuel filter on and I took the hoses off of the body that go to the fuel tank, then pressure, you know, return fuel from the injection system. And I took out the headliner. I got a problem with it leaking and I thought it was from the roof, but it's around the front windshield. So I don't know if that's where the leak is where the windshield meets the frame. I was thinking that if I took out the headliner, well, I need to put a new headliner in it anyway. But if I took out the headliner, I would be able to see where the water had been draining in. If it's, I was kind of thinking it might be coming from the luggage rack on top. But I've sealed the corner on the front driver's side of that luggage rack, and uh, I still get it leaking. As long as it's sitting in the patio here, or the 
carport uh, is fine. Or if it's sitting, if it's sitting level, that's when it leaks. If it's uh, nose down or tail down, I guess it has enough runoff that it doesn't leak. So I've got to chase that leak down. Don't know where it is. My guess is it's around the windshield, but I've looked for separation between the windshield and the rubber that holds it in and it looks pretty solid to me. <clears throat> I guess I need to get my water hose out, huh? <clears throat> anyway, so I'm getting ready to take the seats out and uh, I'll bring you back when I get that done and we'll see what the floor looks like underneath. Welcome back internet. Welcome to Jeep Pops Adventures. I'm working on my 92 Astro again today and I want to show you what I've done for the last uh, two days probably. So um, I'll get you off the stand and I'll proceed to show you what I've done. So here is the final cut on the frame. Um, these little tabs right here are the spot wells where this bracket goes. It fits into those holes. Um, I may have to, there it goes. Okay, I may have to hammer it on. But this bracket goes on the outside of the frame. So I left those um, spot wells there just so I would know exactly where to put that bracket because that's the original frame rail right there. What you see is the original frame rail. Notice a piece of rust, a rusty hole right there. There's one, the exact same place on the inside. Okay, so that's what I decided. Now, I had to split the underside so that I could squish it together and I bent these in right there so that I could fit it over there and this would stay in the same place. So I didn't want to split this because it's not going to be covered. But this will be covered all the way back to about right in here. So, uh, matter of fact, it goes on that's the shock absorber mount right there and it comes back to about right here okay um, and you can see that uh, there's some vented metal there that's probably just where it rusted so all this stuff in here I had to cut the lip away at that point so I've got a slot here for this shock belt. I've got a slot here for this uh, reinforcement web and on the outside I have a slot around this. It sort of steps down like this and covers up this. I'll, I'll have to weld that in right there. It slopes down kinda like comes down and then sort of angles across goes under here and then comes down. So I'll have to weld this in on the side. Now I've got holes up there where I'm using these screws. These are the screws I was telling you about. They are they're self-tapping and self-threading. And when they go into metal thicker than, say, uh, 16, 18, maybe 18 gauge, uh, they will bite into the metal and they won't uh, strip out. Unless, of course, you're using a jackhammer. So anyway, I'll uh, put the metal piece up there. I've already got the holes drilled most everywhere. Um... And then I'll screw it up here so I know it's as high as it's going to go. 
and that this is flush against the floor. <coughs> and I'll do the same thing on the inside. I've drilled holes in the replacement part. Let me let me go show you the replacement part. It's I just painted it and so it's hanging up drying. And so this is the replacement piece. You can see this is the outside uh, surface and you can see there in the front where I have sort of made a jigsaw puzzle out of the thing trying to get around the hole and the shock mount and here's the other side so I had to cut those pieces out to go around that's the web reinforcement web and then this is going around the shock mount and uh, you can see I've pre-drilled holes in that. It's going to be very difficult to drill the holes in the um, with it on the car. So I wanted to at least have holes through this part, which um, will make it easier to get through the whole thing. Okay, so that seems dry and so now I'm going to go put it on. on this thing so I have to use my bar there. Yeah I'll need the I'll need this thing down on the other side to squish it together. Okay, so left to do is weld the frame rail in and then weld the bracket go that goes over the axle on. <clears throat> and then I have to do the headliner. I've got some new headliner cloth to do the uh, hard part of the headliner. I'm not going to put the headliner in yet because I still got to seal the front windshield and I want to make sure that it's not leaking. That's why I'm doing all this work. The, I think the windshield was leaking and probably this back hatch was leaking water so every time it rained the carpet would get flooded and it's supposed to be uh, sealed. There's rubber backing on it but apparently it went around the rubber backing and got under the into the mat and completely saturated that with water and hence the rust on the floor inside. So um, it's time to start welding. So I'm going to put the camera away so I don't mess up my camera.
Okay, YouTube. Uh, that thing is done. I know it looks horrible, but hopefully I got it welded on there well enough. And there's the thing in the back. Now this whole thing, all anywhere there's a weld seam or or metal that is overlapped right right here, it's going to get seam sealer. And uh, I don't guess I can put any seam sealer in there because I want that to be open like it is here so that it can dry out if it gets water in there. One thing I have noticed about these Astros is that you notice where the wheel well ends? It's right any time the tire is spinning around, it's going to be slinging water all up in here. So I'm thinking about putting in, starting probably along that line right there, I'm thinking about putting a plastic liner in here that wraps around here. Oh yeah, and I guess that's going to get seam sealer too. I don't know why it doesn't have seam sealer in it already. It should. I've already put seam sealer in the other side. Um, anyway, I'm hot, I'm tired, and it's kind of time to quit anyway. Um, so I'm going to say bye and go get cleaned up, get me a shower, get me some, a drink, uh, yeah, rum and tea, there we go, unsweet tea and rum, that tastes good, anyway, see you later, bye YouTube.